food. Not bad. Oh, good. Goody, good. Good, good. Are uh, you guys like uh, toodling around the countryside looking for antiques or nice houses or anything? No. <laughs> no, no that's I, not up your I, street. I prefer looking at something a little bit younger. <laughs> And what might that be, Tony? <laughs> well, you know, younger antiques. Oh, younger antiques? <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, all right then, mate. Yeah. He likes going to Ikea. What do you like doing? <laughs> um, I'm quite partial to the old antique cookbook occasionally, mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, I'm not really... Not know. into the furniture business? Oh, not really, no. Well, you've got to know what you're doing, haven't you? Plates or crockery? Yeah, but you've got to know... You know you've got, I can't yeah, I know. When you talk about the antiques or the housing market, you really do have to know what you're doing, ladies and gentlemen. Well, we've got two experts in the field here today. Please welcome the first of them from BBC Two's Vlog It, Paul Martin! <laughs> Tony. Oh. Tell us all about Flog It then. Flog It is a cross between the Antiques Roadshow and mm -hmm. Bargain Hunt. It's got the factual, historical element of the mm -hmm. Antiques Roadshow. And then we have a bit of fun with it later mm -hmm. on in the show because we take it to auction and we flog it. So really it's the Antiques Roadshow stripped of all sentimentality in yeah, a way. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of brought, brought down to the bare essentials. <laughs> exactly. Isn't it? Yeah. And it's kind of really interesting when I watch it, seeing people's reaction. That is just a... That's oh, it's just, wonderful. Oh, that's the golden moment. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it can go wrong. Mm. And you see the blood drain from their face. And yeah. you don't I see the blood drain from your face. <laughs> yeah. What have I done? <laughs> and you don't know what to say. And you yeah. say I'm really sorry. Oh, but good. the good moments are really special. They're the key moments. Well, there might be a good moment in about 20 odd minutes' time if he's bought the correct food. So Can I show you what I bought? Yeah, We've got the gourmet bag. Give it a little shake for us. I'm really sorry I went mm. one P over. Did you? Yes. Oh, well, just shake it out. We like shaking it out. And I bought free presents along. Ooh. Which I'll tell you about in a minute. I'll All right, it looked like a bit of fashion there, <laughs> yes, doesn't it? it is. What a gorgeous sea bass. What else you've bought here then, uh, Paul? I um, bought uh, red onion, I bought some couscous and mm. some rocket, which I absolutely adore. Mm -hmm. A bit of dandelion, really, isn't mm. it? And some little cherry tomatoes and some grapes. Yeah, lovely. And uh, you said one p over, so that was. Ten pounds and one pence. Yeah, that's a gourmet bag. I know it sounds a bit extravagant. We sometimes can our special guest on give them that extra bit of money, but what a sea bass that is, Tone. Look at the sea bass on there. Yeah. No? <laughs> <laughs> All right then, tell us what you've got there. Then. I was given some fashion around, and mm. really, I think this is so special. I'd mm. like you guys to have it and show me what I could do with it. Mm, I'm sure Tony's going to come up with something. You, you're a yeah, bash man. You just put it in my bag. I'll take it. <laughs> home. Yeah. I mean... I'm sure you will. <laughs> you have a little bit of a think, both okay. of you. And uh, we also mentioned something to do with houses, didn't we? Well, here's the presenter from Escape to the Country. It's Catherine G. <laughs> How are you? Escape to the you. country. How many people want to escape to the country? Because that's what your programme's all about, um, isn't Well, it? lots, it would appear, because mm -hmm. they're all queuing up to come on the show. And basically, we help people who are just fed up of living in grimy, overcrowded cities kind of realise the dream and go and find their perfect property in the countryside. Mm, it's not always ideal, though, is it? That's the theory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Always looks lovely. I have actually friends, I'm sure you do, mm -hmm. I'll visit you in the country, don't yes, I? Yes, you do. And they're sort of, they kind of can't wait for you to come out there, you know. They want to kind of break the monotony because it's also peaceful yeah. at times, isn't it? Yeah, well, I mean, people who move from the city, they've probably got sort of 25 buses a day and very well-stocked supermarkets around them. Yeah. If you move to the country, you might get one bus a week. Yes. Mm. And the chance of getting a ciabatta loaf from that <laughs> same as getting a chocolate yeah. fire garden. <laughs> I know that you get some lovely markets out there, so let's have a look at yeah, uh, what well, you bought along so here. So I normally go to my local market, and mm -hmm. I'm very boring. I just buy kind of, you know, potatoes and usual mm -hmm. fruit and veg. So I've bought some really exotic -y things Ooh. to get some ideas of what <laughs> to do with them. <laughs> um, Anytime the chefs see shells, they go, oh, no. Sorry, sorry. No, I don't eat Who's so meat. <laughs> well, no, I just I'll give you a challenge. I'll help you, Because you rice the challenge. So I bought some scallops. Yeah. Shell on, which is really good. I've got a squash, um, an avocado, guava. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Nice exotic touch. Um, polenta, because I never really know what to do with that. Mm -hmm. Presumably you do. Oh, hopefully, to get charm. Um, some shallots, oh, nice. trendy pepper. Romano pepper. Um, and some palms nice out. Nice bag. Palms out, very nice. Yeah. Nice Arch. bag. Um, £9.89. There you go. So oh, we're already girl. winning on price. Mm. <laughs> she is. You know what you could do with your antiques, mate? I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Phil? And by the way, an allergy to garlic here, someone who doesn't like yes, garlic, so you no have garlic. to avoid using okay, that in your okay. cooking. But generally happy with uh, what you've got here? Very nice. <laughs> oh, that nice was a bit delayed, wasn't it? Nice. <laughs> Not ringing with confidence. <laughs> <laughs> have a chat. I'll be back. Paul, let's find out what Tony's going to be cooking for you. OK, well, this is a lovely bag I'm gonna uh, obviously fillet the food I'm gonna take it off the bone um, two fillets one fillet um, we'll just season it up 
a uh, little bit of salt and pepper, pan fry it very quickly and serve it mm. with some sweet and sour um, tomatoes and rocket salad mm. uh, with a nice balsamic um, dressing. The other fillet, I'm going to put some gentle spices on it, not, not too harsh, and then we'll serve that with some couscous, which we get lots of citrus flavours oh. in there, we'll serve it with a burnt orange vinaigrette. Mm -hmm. And then this beautiful uh, cheese, what I'm going to do, you can't eat the skin of this mm. cheese, so what I'm going to do is going to take the top off, Bake it off with some fresh herbs, make some great chutney, grow some Ooh. bread, and you just dip it in and... Ooh! Oh, oh how God, good God. is that? Exactly. That's fantastic. <laughs> I think that's a high five one. Go on, then. Oh, yeah. Hey, hey. What's say? All right, then. <laughs> got to keep the line, haven't you? They've got to do some cooking. Now, what about lovely Catherine? What's she getting? Right. Half a scallops in the shell grilled, half a scallops out coated in polenta. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll then make guacamole to go underneath there. We'll do parmesan crisps to go with that. We'll make guacamole with some of the uh, shallots and uh, some coriander, fresh lime juice, that sort of thing. Give it a real mm. bit of kick. Polenta, cheesy polenta we'll do anyway. Then we'll do an oriental style squash with lots of, of uh, herbs and, and, and acid and all sorts of stuff in there. Acid? As in lemon juice, <laughs> oh, I see. balsamic. <laughs> Don't it's encourage you. I thought, I thought we were talking about the aliens then, didn't they? <laughs> Burn a hole in my table. <laughs> and then and we make guava tatata. -ta. Oh, guava tatata. -ta -ta. Oh, oh, sounds nice. delicious, doesn't it? Yeah, you happy? Good. Well, both our presenters are absolutely delighted. Let's see how they fare in 20 minutes. When I say ready, steady, cook. OK, up and running, ladies and gentlemen. The uh, old sea bass here is going to be filleted down. One half going to be gently spiced and kind of uh, grilled off a little bit. The other one's going to be cooked down with a rather nice uh, sweet and sour tomato sauce with a little bit of rocket going through there. Tomato sauce is more, more like a salad, actually. Vacheran just baked off in the oven, perhaps with a little bit of garlic and some herbs, and that's going to be served with a nice grape chutney. Couscous, well, we all know about that. You can introduce all sorts of flavours, and the chef will be doing that. But what about these? Half of them are going to be grilled, half are going to be covered in polenta and cooked off. We're going to have a roasted squash. We're going to have a guava tartatan. We're going to have all sorts of wonderful things. And the avocado there, well, that's going to come uh, be broken down into a guacamole. So the next 20 minutes, stay tuned, because, uh, in fact, the next 40-odd minutes, ladies and gentlemen, wonderful food coming your way. Gourmet bags, and uh, already Tony is showing us how to fill it. Our sea bass. Just a quick demo on. on. <clears throat> I've wiped the fish dry. Yeah. OK. What about so scaling the, it? Do you need... The scales to... are gone. OK. The, the fishmonger's kindly done that for us. Mm -hmm. So wipe it dry, because then when you need to touch it, it's not very slippy, and you can actually manoeuvre it a lot easier. OK. Right, I've made an incision under You know about this, this Paul? The, uh... No. Do you know, I always buy my fish filleted. I'm really lazy, and I'd love to know how Come to and have a look, then. Yeah. So the I've fish. made an incision this side, okay. the body side of this gill here, because we don't really want that, there's lots of bones in no. there. And then the backbone runs all the way down here. We're going to turn the knife and just make an incision this side of the backbone. Right, OK. And then you can just keep your knife flat and run that all the way along, like that. Exceptionally sharp mm -hmm. knife. And when you take it off... Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. I know. Yes. You can hear the little gritty bones going on there. It's quite nice, isn't it? Yes. You want to do that in front of everybody so you look really cool. <laughs> unless, um, unless you're on Ready, Steady, Cook, because the audience generally don't like looking at heads and tails. That's why I'm getting rid oh, of it. Oh, You like Tony's head and tail, don't you, ladies and gentlemen? Yes, of course they do, Tone. Till you serve it up, then you've got problems, mate. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So we're not serving up today, and, and uh, you can make a, a lovely fish stock with that. But Beautiful. We won't. Okay. okay. Keep your board nice and clean. All those little bits of blood. And do you take those bones off? off yeah, yeah, I'm going to take those off. But as I'm as I'm working, it's very important when you're working with fish is to keep everything spotless all around yeah. you. And this cloth will go into the laundry yeah. afterwards. Okay. Okay. So then my knife's clean again, and we've got all these little rib bones here. You just cut through that. And then you can see that I'm keeping the knife up towards the, the bones there. OK. And that just takes the And as a, oh, and beautiful. As Paul was saying, ladies and gentlemen, you can get your fishmonger to do this for you. But I think Tony showed us that uh, if you want, you can do it at home. And I think that deserves a round of applause. There we are. Right. Very nice. Oh, thank you very much. Very nice indeed. OK, a couple of minutes gone. Now, what are we going to be doing with this fish then, Tony? Oh, we'll cook it. Yeah. Right at the end, it's only going to take a few minutes. And you're Come taking on. a little bit of that fatty belly I'm away. I'm you? trimming it because yeah. it's going to be served um, this kind of the, the skin side up. I'm going to leave yeah. the skin on because it, one, it will protect the fish, and I actually like a little bit of crispy skin. Lovely. You see, mm. we've trimmed it around. We've got a beautiful shape there. Mm. Um, and this one, I might cut this into strips, but I'll decide a bit later. I'll just say there are some little bones down here. Yeah. Now uh, at the restaurant, we'd get we've got little fish tweezers. tweezers. Yeah. We'll pull it out. It takes a lot of time, but if you run the knife down either side, they only go to about there, of those bones, mm -hmm. but don't go through the skin. You can actually just pluck that out 
right? And that piece of fish comes out, mm -hmm. and inside there are all those little bones. So Great. that is completely bone free. Nice now. little tip there. Okay. All right, then I'll come back and see Paul and Tony later. But we've heard some blitzing and things going on here. I've got a feeling that's for the old ta ta tan. Ta ta tan. Nah. This is a okay. really crumbly shortbread, Ains. Uh huh. So it's just. What do you mean crumbly? What gives it that crumbly texture then? More fat. <laughs> More fat, basically. <laughs> OK, then. OK, so it's dead easy. Mm -hmm. So it's three quarters fat to flour yeah. rather than half fat to flour. OK, okay. there you go. Okay. All right, you can balance that out. You can work that out depending on what quantity you want then. Right, scallops. Mm -hmm. Deep shell, flat shell. Yeah. Palette knife, go straight across the flat shell like that, lift them up and it releases mm. the shell straight away. OK. Now, all you need to then is just take out the muscle, mm -hmm. which is just around the outside there, and that will just come off. A little tiny black um, sort of sack, sack there. just yeah. there. And just with a palette knife, just take the whole off ends. OK, That's so, it. so simple. That's it. And they really don't take long to cook, no, these guys. Seconds. Uh, again, you know, you can buy these frozen, you can't beat fresh. No, exactly. Hey, Catherine, you can't beat fresh, can you? Fresh no. they are, they, These are um, beautifully fresh, I mm. have to say. But, you know, mm. it's like you get what you, what you pay for. And what's for. the sign for freshness? What should people look for? It should be for? really tightly closed, Ains. Yeah. Really heavy as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but, that applies to all shellfish. But if you, can, then if you can't get in with a palette knife, you can use a screwdriver. Yeah. You need to go right in like that and open it up. Very and quickly. And also, it will smell really fresh, Ains, as well. OK. OK? Now, all these... Fresh, must... Smell of the sea, not a Smell of the smell. sea. All That's these mussels make great sauce. Yeah. We used to mix it with Riesling and make a very sweet sauce to go on scallops with bacon. Oh, it's fantastic. beautiful. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Okay, so don't waste it. We, mm -hmm. we haven't got time today, but I would keep all that. Uh, it makes a beautiful fishy sauce. Tony was just saying that about his bones over there too. You know, you don't... It, oh, great, ideal world. We make a lovely fish stock. Exactly. But there you go. So and you can you see these have closed up. That's the indication. And if they are a little bit open, you can tap them. A bit like when we talk to you about mussels. You know, you tap the mussel and they have to close up before you cook them. That's that. The same right, again. Catherine, there you go. It's job for you. Day. OK, Catherine's got a job to Three do. Three of those, and you can put any seasoning on you'd like. You've got oh, cayenne packing. pepper, salt and pepper, whatever you like, we'll whack yeah. it under the grill. And do you need to rinse those off first? No, or not? They're, they're actually OK. OK. Sometimes you can see if they're gritty. These aren't gritty, gritty. they're perfect. Gritty meaning there's sand or something like that in there. These are perfect. OK, but look at this cooking down. So now, what have you got in here with this? Just sugar and...? Just sugar and butter, Ains. Now, young guava fruit, I don't think you need to um, skin and... Uh, OK, means. Chef. I think that tastes really nice. All right, then. And how thick do you want the plenty? Do you want it quite loose or do you I want, want it... it... A bit thick in that, Ains, actually. Oh, OK. Let's have a look at this. It's just okay. dead well, easy. It's one minute polenta, so we're just putting a little bit more in there. OK. And, uh, you. you know, make it according to packet instructions, ladies and gentlemen. But you can put, uh, you know, add stock to it if you want to, Phil. Yeah, stock. And the thing water, about polenta, basically. Mm -hmm. it's like pasta. It's a vehicle for nice flavour. Yeah. Now, the tartar is starting to brown up nicely. Lovely. Make a what type of flavour did you normally add to this? You know, people are looking for... Today we're doing cheese and black pepper. OK. That's cheese, it. black Sorry, pepper. You can put a handful of herbs in there. That's what we're going to do later, yeah. Yeah, in there, all sorts, as uh, Phil says, it takes on the flavour of all sorts it's of things. It's a great vehicle. Yeah. Yes. That's it. I'll just um, take that off the heat now, Phil, and just put that there for you. Oh, sure. Do you want a knob of butter on top of that, Chef? Okay. Avocado. Lovely. <clears throat> right, Ains. Rest right. of the polenta. Where's that? Yeah. Going? There's the rest there. Oh, what I'm going to do, go. Ainsley, is mm -hmm. just in this bowl, yeah. put some polenta, and I've got egg white here, which is pure protein. Scallop into the egg white, into the polenta. It just coats it really nice. It was also a nice coating like that. Look at that. Rather Beautiful. than using breadcrumbs, just use a bit Beautiful. of polenta. Like oh, what's that classic oyster dish? Poor boys, isn't it? Poor boys. Boys. Poor boys sandwich. Yeah, poor boys sandwich. Oh, That's right. Fantastic. And they dip that in the oyster, dips oh, in a bit of polenta. It's fantastic. Fantastic. Very similar thing to that. They're great sandwiches, aren't they? They are. I did, actually, mm. very recently in America. Yeah. And of course, you could just, uh, yeah. if you didn't have polenta, you could do that with breadcrumbs. You could dip it in anything, couldn't yep, you, Phil? Absolutely. Flour, egg, breadcrumbs, you know, that classic sort of panning method, if you like. Right. OK, Tart that's tazzy. going into the oven. Parmesan and remember, here. that's just like your apple tartatin. Parmesan crisp stains. I've got parmesan. You can make a large one, Phil. I'm going to make a large one and cut them up. OK. Large, beautiful parmesan okay. crisp. You've got another cut. Do you want a bit oh, yeah. of a, Do you want something easier to crush that oh, with? Yeah. I think I need yeah, you to crush it. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> absolutely bang on. There you go. You've got that. That's Trust a bit me, easier. You can really get in there and. What do you do? Because some of it's not. Some of it's a bit tough, a bit is tough, it? It's a bit tough, yeah. All right, then we have to give that a bit of a squeeze. It's a stronger touch than mine, probably. Oh, dear. So, so is it, is, it, is it really beneficial living in the country? Then give me an idea of why I'd pack up my home here and move off there. Well, if you think, if you're living in the city, you're like you're getting in the car every morning, sitting in traffic jams, you get stressed, mm. it can take you hours to get to work, there's pollution, it might be 
put some rubbish outside the door. Get to the country and everything kind of steps down a gear, doesn't it? Yeah. So it's just a more relaxed way of life. And do you think it's, uh, it's, it's only for certain people in a certain age group, or is it for everybody? No, I think it's all age groups, but I think w what we find on the show is that people have usually got to a catalyst in their life that's prompted them to make the move. So sure. younger generation, it might be maybe having children mm -hmm. and thinking they want to have them to go up somewhere a bit more open spaces sure. um, and then later on it might be maybe retirement mm. or sometimes when people have had an illness or some kind of life-changing incident that sure. makes them think right you know now or never let's go and do it and have, do you enjoy the rural lifestyle because you live in the country i do live you? in the country well you see, i grew up in the country and i think mm. most of the people who it really works for have had some experience of country life already sure halfway guys so it's kind of the people who dream of it but maybe a complete urbanite yeah. who actually get there and think oh but hang on a minute everything's a bit quiet crow every morning and it's driving me nuts yeah, kind absolutely. of thing yeah. and and you know can and we you get can't the... pop out and buy your milk at 12 o'clock exactly. at night or something like yeah. that in the local so garage. i think you kind of you need some experience of it before you go for it to work sure. but i love it nice. a few weekends in the country it. will sort them out won't it <laughs> all right <laughs> uh, Catherine's looking for another job we've got right, a little bit yeah, of quiver here that's been sort do of do you want to peel those for me i know they make you cry you i will cry i'm just you know, quick. What, what, they'll be all right the shallots are not too bad I think there's something here we are. Have I got to have a spoon in my mouth? Mm. Have you bit. got to have a spoon in your mouth or chew a bit of gum or something? Yeah, or like safety pen. You got safety okay. pen. <laughs> there we are. Just... Oh, there we are. There's a spoon there if you want to put that in your mouth. All right. <laughs> <laughs> go on, do it for us. Go on, go on, go on, go on, say go on. Go on, hey. No, I'm not doing that. I'll come back and see you. We've got lots of things happening here. I've left Tony for a while now with Paul down the other end. He's made a great chutney. Tell us quickly what's gone in there, right, please, What's gone in there? We've got a little bit of uh, chopped red onion. Yeah. We've got some chopped tomato, the grapes, which we've taken the seeds out of. Mm. Um, we've got some red wine vinegar. Yeah. And some um, soft brown sugar. OK, I'm eight and a half minutes now, down. guys. We've got the tomatoes that have been de-seeded. You've, you've been, been busy, doing. haven't you? Yes, Paul? I have. I can't believe we're halfway through. It's going so quickly. Everything just sort of flies by. Look at this. He's taken off that yellow. Do you scoop normally sort of skin that. that off like that at yeah. home? Um, no, I've not done this before. Okay. So I'm, I'm learning. I'm yeah, I'll just learn. skin that off there. Can you see that? You've got to go a little Ooh, bit deeper. Yeah, just look at so that get that in there. Go on, you have a go. Just rip that all off. Just take that skin off. That's it. Nice and rind. That's it. You should Lovely not smell. eat the rind there. And why shouldn't it? Is it because it's a bit ammonia y that rind? Or? No, no, it, you shouldn't eat the rind because it says so on the package. <laughs> <laughs> about some of the uh, big success stories of the programme then, Paul? Oh, we've had some, classic over, um, some classics over the last four years, I think. Rosemary that... Garlic Tone? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, carry on. One that sticks in my mind is yeah. a chap that turned up um, in Torquay um, with half a dozen watercolours, in fact, there were five, and he bought them at a church fete for about four pounds, mm -hmm. and he bought them purely for the glass, oh. because his greenhouse had a few panes that had some, you know, broken bits. So yeah. he bought the glass, he took the glass off the um, pictures, stuck it onto his greenhouse, and he didn't really like the watercolours. He, he brought them in to flog it. We valued them, and eventually we sold them at Burns in Exeter for just under £5,000. 5000 yes. Wow! I know, it's quite amazing. Wow! And he didn't even want them. He didn't even want them, no! It, it just goes to show, doesn't it? Somebody's trash is somebody else's trash. I know, absolutely. Do you oh, want another, no. another piece yeah, of Yeah, just give us one more of those. Now, what about uh, advice to buyers? Because I know you've brought along a couple of items, haven't you? Oh, I've bought some. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I bought something Show from, us. Let's have from a the look, look. late seventeenth century. Uh -huh. and it's some table cream. Look at that. I don't think Tony would like to serve something on a plate like that. But, but that's what people actually ate off. Yes, it? before um, obviously if you couldn't afford silver or pewter, yeah. before the railway systems were all over the country and you couldn't uh -huh. transport the wares from Stoke on Trent, all the potteries. People used turn pieces of wood like that for their bowls wow. and their platters. And if you had one of these in your garden shed, how much would uh, something like that actually Something fit? like that now, that's a hardy survivor. It's yeah. made of sycamore. It's ideal for, obviously, for putting near food because of the close grain. It's the idea for the cheese or something oh, like that. Oh, wouldn't it look stunning? That would set you back about £100. £100. Mm. Could we use that today? Yes, put the cheese on it or something. Yeah, do you want the, the cheese on there, yeah, Tone? Yeah, That's OK. And tell us about these. Oh, this is a little chestnut beaker and some spoons that I found in Wales. Mm. Typical Welsh spoons, uh -huh. again made of sycamore, which is ideal for being in contact with food because there's no there's no um, sort of tannin acids in the wood, sure. so it's very hygienic. Um, these set you back about fifty. £50 pounds each. £50? Pounds. So what did you buy these for? Because I know that you're an antique collector. You've got your little shop. Yes. Or was it in Wiltshire? Uh, in Wiltshire, right? in yeah. Marlborough. Um, I just love everything from this the 17th and 18th yeah. century. I think it's got a heart and soul. It's got yeah. its own personality. Yeah. And um, these are, they're very sculptural as well. They'll, they'll look great. 
in a contemporary setting as a, as a piece of sculpture. All right, you just like that thing. Oh. I like that look. It's a oh, decorator's that, that look. look as well. how, do you, how do you escape from it all, Paul? What do you do? I oh. love the countryside. Yeah, I do love the countryside. Well, if you're looking for a on house, on program, aren't you? If you're looking for a house, I know the perfect bird. <laughs> 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 She'll sort you out. She'll do you a nice cheap deal. Yeah, I hope what about so. you, Tone? I don't do cheap, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to him, Mr. Posh. Tell us a little bit about this jug. Then it looks like a cream jug. It is a cream a, jug. A pouring spout. It is a cream jug. Dating yeah. from what period then? Um, that's about 1760, something like that. Just, uh -huh. just middle of the 18th century. Wow. You know, and that's made from what type of wood? That is chestnut. It's chestnut. And it's yeah. just so lovely. I'd love that. I'd love to be able to serve cream. I think things like this are coming back into fashion again. Oh, definitely. So what, briefly. Oh. Ooh. Oh, we're getting uh, a bit of fire going there, Phil. What's going on over there? Are you burning the place down? That's Don't what I panic. do at home. Yeah. Do you know? <laughs> the chefs sometimes do that on the programme, saying, Oi, come down here, I've got something to show you. <laughs> i better go. I'll come okay. back and talk with you again. And, uh, Tony, briefly tell us about cooking um, the uh, fish, please, the right, sea bass. I've said it before. Well, it, it's, it's not tough, it's not like a piece of meat where we have to cook it to tenderise it. It's mainly protein, so we're cooking it to set the protein, mm. so it takes minutes. OK. You know, just a couple of minutes. I've got it skin side down. Lovely. So we're just crisping that up, turn it over and it's ready. Beautiful. It's Looking forward to seeing you. OK, time is moving on. My I didn't oh, do look at this. I, did, I didn't do that on purpose, by the way. It was an accident. Yeah. What's that? This is that flaring up. I know, it's quite good though. It looks good. Looks like very Nick Nearnish. Yeah, but. <laughs> I'm not even, even going to go there. Yeah, oh, all right, though, right. mate. So, scallops on the yeah. grill, here we are. OK, and these, look at these, ladies and gentlemen. Remember he told you about the Parmesan and Chris? They've come out. They're a little bit flimsy now, but you give those a few minutes in the air and they'll dry out completely okay. and they'll get really lovely the and crisp. Come out. These are actually beginning to crispen up now as I speak. And then you can stick all the shards in different things or serve them with a lovely salad. And you can also bake them a little bit longer so you get a darker colour on them. Keep an eye. A lot of modern ovens now, you know, you've got glass in front of your oven so you can have a look and see what the colour is. Take them out and let them cool down. Oh, how do we finish these off then, Catherine? Ask <laughs> okay. That's mint. Chopped That's mint. Chopped mint. mint. Tabasco, yeah. polenta, and we'll just squeeze the lime on the last second. Okay, okay, a little bit of lime. We've got yeah. the quacamole. Did you make that? Uh, well, I helped. Yes, you she helped did. make you it. Did it very oh, well. oh, <laughs> you used to be a cook, love. You should be you should, should be talking <laughs> effervescently about your lovely yes, food. I trained in the days when it didn't really count unless it had a gallon of double cream and at least half a pound of butter in it. Oh, well, yeah, we so know Brian not... Turner still cooks <laughs> like that, didn't he? Eh? <laughs> we love Brian when he starts cooking like that. Now, tell us a little bit about this then, uh, Chef, what's happening here? Well, I'm this doing is... some palms and crisps. Yeah. And the, the, the scallops which are there, Ainsley. OK, these scallops are being yeah. cooked down and they're flambéed off. And you, you've got that little, it's, it's tainted red, what, what's gone in Tomato there? Tomato ketchup soy a sauce. Tomato ketchup. And a touch ketchup. of vinegar. Yeah, you... But look at that colours. It's hey. almost Chinese. Isn't, isn't it that? feel clever? There's the type of things you have at home, ladies and gentlemen. Tomato ketchup soy you sauce. Just finished it You're thinking, oh, no, it's not gourmet style. But l the chefs actually use it here to show you the versatility of those ingredients. Give that a quick stir for me, can Yeah, there you go. Yeah. There we are. All oh, right, that looks good and colourful, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it looks great. Absolutely lovely. Now, what's uh, any disasters for you? You've got one particular dish you call smashed pavlova. Uh, when I was a chalet girl, mm. I was cooking for 16, we had a kind of open plan kitchen, much yeah. like this. So my, Two minutes. My guests were all sitting over there. Got my pavlova and, uh, and dropped it, basically, splat on the floor completely. Face down, so oh, cream all over the floor. Nothing else to give. Them. Anyway, so my chalet girl partner kind of did a bit of an act with the uh, with the old tea towel, yeah. <laughs> kind of covering up a bit of screen, scooped back onto the plate and put a bit more cream on it and served it. Oh. <laughs> no complaints. Sorry to anyone who was staying no in my complaints. chalet. <laughs> no complaints. <laughs> oh no, they loved it. There, so there you go. They <laughs> there loved we go, it. New dish. What you don't know, you don't know. One and a half minutes to go. Phil's making this look lovely. Yeah. There we are. A bit of black pepper on there. Don't forget your guava tartar tan. Oh, Let's no. briefly go back over to the other side of the kitchen here. We've got to tomatoes that are cooking down in a beautiful balsamic vinegar. All the fish is off. Coming up for the one-minute mark any moment now, please, Tony. Let's get that food out there. We're flying, oh, we're dear. Flying, we're flying, we're flying. Mmm. Look at this. Look and it's all that. coming along. Now, down there, Catherine did a dating agency for farmers. Wow. <laughs> this is quite interesting. <laughs> that is, actually. Yes, one minute to go. Oh, would you go out with a farmer girl? Um, yes. No, yes. Yeah, there you go. Yes. That's what we like to hear. Ladies and gentlemen, the time is of the essence now. Our chefs have less than one minute to get their food out. Frantically running around, but boy, doesn't it look good already. Let's get the old Vacheron out of the oven there. OK, 40 seconds to go. You've got some chopped chives down there. Where do you want your toast, Tone? Toast needs to go round the... Uh... OK. 
Let's get that. And you've got the old vash around there. Remember, you're voting for what the chefs did with the ingredients they were given, guys. Remember that. There we are. Mind your back's really hot. Don't worry about it. Here we are. OK, beautiful baked uh, vash around there. OK, time is moving. <coughs> Here we go. <clears throat> 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. That's really hot. Six, five, four, three, two, one, go! <laughs> oh, we do not move it sometimes, don't we? What did our chef start with? Well, Tony Tobin had a large sea bass. A bag of couscous, a vacherin, rocket, mixed grapes, cherry tomatoes and a red onion. Whilst Phil Vickery started off with several fresh scallops, a bag of polenta, parmesan cheese, squash, avocado, guava, romero pepper and a couple of shallots. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, well, our experts have done exceptionally well for our experts, haven't they? What do you think? I think that is fantastic. So quick. And look at the presentation. Well, you go and have a bit of a try, because it's all in the tasting. Tony, oh. what about a name? Make a bid for this sea bass, cos cos it's going to rock it oh. in value. <laughs> <laughs> that was quick. That was quick. I normally come out of those lines. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> That is Excellent, my man. And what did you do with your ingredients? OK, th let's start with this one, this sea bass. We filleted the sea bass off, mm. obviously, top of the show. Put a little incisions in there so it cooks quite quickly. Mm. And we just cook that sea bass in a pan with a little bit of olive oil, uh, a little bit of salt, not oh. too much salt. We're all mm. eating too much salt. A little bit of salt in there uh, just to crisp the skin. Flipped it over for about 30 seconds on the other side. Yeah. We got our tomatoes into the oven, olive oil on them first, then sprinkled with some sugar. The sugar mm. sticks to the olive oil, so they're all coated in the, in, in the sweetness. And when they're mm. roasted, mm. it comes out the oven, balsamic vinegar and uh, basil, and that creates a dressing which we dressed our rocket in and served the fish with. Beautiful. This one, we, uh, oh, we, we brought some chicken stock up to the boil. We added orange, lemon and lime zest and the juice, so you get a really nice citrusy flavour. I lightly dusted the sea bass with a little bit of mild curry powder, mm -hmm. and then we made this lovely orange vinaigrette, orange juice, mm. um, white wine vinegar, uh, orange zest, which we caramelised mm. in some sugar, so it's like a burnt oh, orange dressing. That's lovely. even better. And then um, the grape chutney, <laughs> we put tomatoes, onions, yes. grapes, um, with some brown sugar and vinegar and just cook that down. This we stuffed with rosemary and garlic, baked it mm. off, and this is walnut bread. The whole thing should just work amazingly. What do you think? <laughs> He's never normally stuck for words, is he? <laughs> He's normally waiting for the bit. Oh, yes! <laughs> this guy's a genius. Oh, fantastic. That is very good. Well done, both of you. Thank you all worked very hard, and you worked oh. very hard, too. And now this is your reward. Can Have I a taste start? of all of this yeah. lovely food. Tell you what I need to do first. Mm. I need to relieve this one of its shell. I just it so amazing. squeeze it with a little touch. Of, we roast, actually grilled the limes, the well, Ainsley, so you get the roasted oh. lime flavour on it. Oh, lovely. OK, oh, yeah. look at that. Name, Phil. Can't get fresh on that. What about a name? A name has to be a scallop to the country. <laughs> <laughs> Great name today. Great name. Oh, we should win this for that. Brilliant name. That's the hardest part, isn't it? Yeah, I know, exactly. <laughs> okay. Mm, that's why I worried more about that than anything else. What am I going to call it? What did you do with all this? Right. Oh, yeah. Open the scallops up and they were fresh as a daisy, so it's They're nice. Absolutely spot on. Well, all we did was just literally put a touch of Tabasco, polenta, under the grill, salt mm. and pepper. And you put a little bit of spice on, didn't you, as well? I did. A bit um, Literally cook them for about three or four minutes. That's mm. what you need. Doesn't take and then long. Put the, if you put the lime on as well, and you get a roasted lime flavour. Mm. Dead simple. Um, here we just did a stir Very fry with up. the peppers, some of the guava. Now, guava works, a young guava like that will actually cook with the skin on perfectly. It's like okay. a thick skin. And we just put chilli in there and uh, brown sugar and a bit of lemon juice to give it a real sort of punchy oriental style. Mm. Here we make parmesan mm. crisps. Now, the scallops there, as you can see, look at that. Beautifully they're fresh. Delicious. I almost thought they deep fry, but they're not. Mm. Uh, guacamole, which is just the peppers, should have had garlic, we didn't like that. Coriander, salt and pepper, <laughs> vinegar. Rest of the polenta here, we actually um, put the rest of the cheese in mm. and, and spice it up with black pepper. Good and this here is, the guac is this the guava tart tartan. Yeah. And look at this. Mm. And there are no calories in this, is there? Look at that. Mm. And it is, look, it's yeah. very hot, so mm. be careful. Yes. Look, this is a real comfort food, this polenta, comfort. isn't it? Satisfied? Mm. Yes, delicious. Oh, they're delighted, so ladies and gentlemen. Mm. What about our studio audience? What do oh, they think? Fun. Green pepper? Red tomato? Let's find out. Will you all please mm. vote mm. now? Mm. And up they go. And you can see it's uh, quite a close one, this. But there's 
a few more. Red no. tomatoes! Thank you. Thank you. Hey! Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Good day. Enjoy yourself today. Yeah, no, it's fantastic. Wonderful. Thanks for your company. Your star. Mm. Well, so you've got clever. a £100 uh, spending money Thank there for you. yourself. And um, uh, well, we're going to donate this to Macmillan Nurses. That's lovely. That's very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Brilliant. Well, that was quite close. It was uh, close, was that, it? That uh, money's gone to Macmillan Nurses, but I don't know what you're going to do with your hamper, though, because there's all sorts of goodies in there to get home and impress whoever you want to. Ooh. Maybe you could flog it. I could do, couldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much indeed, Tony. <laughs> Absolute pleasure having you thank here. Thank you very Come much. Come and join us over here. We've got the uh, quickie bags to think about, ladies and gentlemen, but let's say a big, very big thank you to our expert guests, Paul Martin and Catherine D. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Let's see what the boys can do with... Oh, it's a sweet one. This little selection. Right. We've got some nice double chocolate brownies. Oh, I don't need to do anything with those, but our boys will do. Along with a nice large tub of mascarpone. We've got some peach halves, raspberries. Uh, what's this then, Phil? A bit of chocolate. Oh, bit of chocolate. It's mm. a great... It's always a lovely chocolate. Noir. That's Very nice and dark, isn't it? Wow. Nice dark black chocolate. Oh, and... Some Baileys. All right, there you go, boys. What do you think? And just a token. Some sort of cheesecake using the brownie as the base, I suppose, with ricotta. Um, mascarpone. Uh, mascarpone. I just checked if you were paying attention. <laughs> um, with a mascarpone and raspberries yeah. and kind of chocolate sauce on the top that go really nicely together. Mm -hmm. Peachy, uh, pears, yeah, no, peaches <laughs> and raspberries. I'm just checking. Mm -hmm. Peaches and raspberries is mm. um, kind of peach melba. Mm. Rings a bell, so we do yeah. some sort of twist on peach melba. Um, Bailey's, well, that's Phil's department, really. Um, some sort of chocolate mousse as well, since we've got such a lovely chocolate here. So we've got chocolate mm. mousse, we've got a kind of cheesecake with raspberries, we've got peaches with raspberries and mascarpone. OK, Not that's ricotta. your time. Thank you very much indeed, You're Phil. welcome. What are you going to do with your uh, apples? I, I think um, <laughs> with my um, apricots. I think um, I can just see like a big plate of all like sweet bits. Mm -hmm. So we might do some pan-fried peaches. We'll do uh, brownies soaked in a bit of Bailey's. We'll do some raspberries dipped in this great chocolate. We'll make some little tiny mascarpone, almost milfoy with, with the raspberries. We'll make a little tiny cakes which we can stuff with choc melted chocolate and brownies. Almost like a like a sweet meze type. Stop! Mm. I'm dribbling. Mm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Who's won that vote then, ladies and gentlemen? What's it going to be? The green peppers or the red tomatoes? Let's find out. Help me out, will you all please vote now? Ooh, look at this. Ooh, I'll tell you what. They don't want to see miniatures, Phil. They want to see the full stuff, don't they, mate? Grab hold of that Tony. Because right, it's a Tony Tobin bag. Let's go and do it. <laughs> all right, your ten minutes cooking time, Chef, starts. Now, let's do it. What can we do for you? OK. Uh, Phil, I'd like yep. you, if possible, do, why don't you just do all your little desserts yep, okay. on one plate? Oh, lovely. Okay. And then if Phil could melt the chocolate for me, that would be super. Oh, melt chocolate. Oh. Melt, melt chocolate. chocolate. And how many okay. of these uh, brownies do you want to keep tone for yourself? I need... Three? Three. Three. Yeah. OK, Three's Phil, yeah, three cool. enough for you? Yeah, that's fine. OK, here we are. Chocolate's coming over now. Uh, tell us what you're going to be doing then, Chef. So what I'm going to do is a uh, cheesecake, off. chocolate yeah. cheesecake. Yeah. Um, brownie, brownie chocolate cheesecake. Okay. Some brownie chocolate cheesecake, indeed. Yeah. Um, I'm going to do a peach marble, which is uh, peaches and raspberries, basically. Mm -hmm. Not sure how we're going to do it, but we'll try and make it look a little bit different. Okay. I'll just drain these peaches for you, so. You can... What are you going to do? Pop some cream or something inside? Oh, could you whip me some cream? I certainly will, Chef. Uh, yeah. In fact, whip all the cream in the fridge. That would be brilliant. Mm. Actually, Ains, could you do something here as well? Oh, that's very nice of you. Would you mind? I, I, I want to use it myself. Oh, all right, then, yeah. I don't need to go to the gym coming on this show, because all I do is whip cream. <laughs> oh, I don't be like that, mate. And you do it so beautifully. I know, yeah, Tony. Ains, Thank you. Go, mate. <laughs> <laughs> There we are. All right, now, tell us what you're going to be doing with that. I'm just soaking these brownies in, um, in a little bit of this lovely um, Irish liqueur. Mm -hmm. um, it's, a, it's a big favourite at, uh, at parties when all the booze has run out. Yeah. That was a joke. <laughs> well, you got the laugh just ten seconds late. <laughs> <laughs> 
Two so we've... minutes gone. Oh, Phil, what are you making? <laughs> we'll try, attempt to make some meringues. A meringue? Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, meringue. Microwave meringue. Yeah, you did say, you, I did say attempt. Now, if, not, if you've not seen this before, ladies and gentlemen, it's something quite, uh, dead quite easy. amazing. Yeah, it, it's dead easy. And look at the size of those little uh, balls that Phil is rolling there. These are meringue balls, and they're just going to expand. Nine Tell ounces of yeah. ice and sugar to one, one medium egg white. Make it up to, to a um, fudgy consistency. Yeah. And what did it? Did it work? Did it remember that? Yeah, it will work this time. Chuck I it know on it will there. Work. You'll be absolutely fine. Literally, a bit of paper like that, probably in the microwave, about, about a minute. You're going to make a raspberry sauce. Just blitz them up with some ice and sugar, a little bit of lime juice. I just want to get this. Mm -hmm. The mascarpone. Yeah. The mascarpone, depending on where you live. Um, I'm mixing with icy oh, sugar. Where do they say mascarpone then? I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. Italy. Italy. Mascarpone, that's English, isn't it? Mascarpone. It's like bar. In Italy, you say mascarpone. Oh, right. Yeah? <laughs> isn't it? Got myself out of that one. Yeah, you did. Cut these rods, mate. Uh, of course you can. So, what we've got there is the, this beautiful kind of sweet vanilla cream. Yeah. We're just waiting for um, you to hurry up with that. I need it as well, Lane. Get me moving. All right, then. I'll give you a hand, mate. <laughs> oh, tote. You want to go in there? Yeah, go on, yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. Okay, six minutes to go. Ah, oh, lovely. Uh, raspberries, I've got a little. Oh, we get this little thing up here. Okay. Some raspberries, some ice and sugar. Okay. And some. Uh, oh, hang on. All right, then. Oh, you nearly went past no, it there, I didn't, didn't you? No, I didn't. I was just did. checking to see if you were paying attention. Yeah. Are you all right with the microwave, Phil? Yeah, <laughs> yeah? Anything wrong there, mate? No. Are you sure? Cool. Right. OK, so it's shut. all cool. No mm. problem. Don't laugh. That's fine, Ains. Yeah, all right then, lovely. Look at the size of these. It's almost a sin to kind of blitz them down. Look almost Tabrys, aren't they? Yeah, they're so big and luscious. Absolutely beautiful. Keep a few back then, Tony. Yeah, because I need some for my um, cheesecake. OK. I'm folding my cream through my mascarpone. Mm hmm Or mascarpone. OK, halfway. Phil, whilst you're... Uh, Whizzing around there. Perhaps you can answer this question <laughs> from oh, yeah, um, Simon Williams from Kent. Good afternoon to you, Simon. And he's uh, saying, I've made some wonderful homemade orange marmalade that's still stored in my kitchen cupboard because I don't have any ideas for using it up other than on breakfast toast. Right. Can you help marmalade, both of you? Yeah. Great are. one. Marmalade bread pudding. Fantastic. OK. Or um, marmalade ice cream. Just make, get a, buy yourself a pot of um, good vanilla ice cream, soften it slightly, and stir your marmalade through the ice cube and refreeze it because it won't freeze. And I put it on um, like French toast, soaked in eggs and cream. It's delicious. My kids love it. What is it? Orange marmalade. Uh, orange marmalade. Yes, he's got orange marmalade. I think steam puddings, don't you? I love steam pudding with the marmalade. Okay, that's fine. A bit of a savoury one. Mix it with some mustard. Mm -hmm. Put it on some um, gammon steaks. Let them marinate in it, and then just very gently and slowly char grill them. Mm -hmm. and you get this lovely mustard and marmalade glaze. Oh, wonderful. Oh, wonderful. Oh, well, there you go, Simon. I think there's about four or five different variations of what you can do. Just treat it like it's a normal jam or something like that, quite honestly. All right, but uh, it really does go well, particularly with pork, maybe some duck. You want to get, sort of roast your duck off a little bit and make a marmalade reduction. You can put a little bit of balsamic vinegar and reduce that down. You can do all sorts of things. It's very versatile. All right, lovely. Oh, look at Phil's meringues. Are they all right, Phil? Yeah, cool. Yeah, lovely. The thing is, ow, ow. The why are they, they laughing get, at you, Phil? They get, they get very hot. <laughs> but what you must do is, if you take them out, they really are hot, seriously. And then just leave them to cool, and for two or three minutes, yeah. and they go for that. Like, Beautiful. 45 seconds. And they're going to be gooey in the centre or just crispy? No, no, they cook right through, Ains. OK, lovely. So we're going to have a little bit nine of a look at those. Nine ounces, one egg white. OK, three minutes to go now. Here's your lovely. Uh, Beautiful. Look at the colour. Look how vibrant that colour is. Just oh, absolutely you lovely. Turn yeah. your chocolates here, mate. Mm. We're going to make some chocolate, chocolate mousse. Ready. Chocolate mousse? Oh, we better hurry up then. Yeah. All right, then. Let's go. You've still got some cream there. Let's get that if done I... very quickly. Right. No, if... I'll tell you what. Just... I'll, I'll make... I'll put the chocolate in. It won't split if I put that chocolate in here, will it? No. No, no, no. It won't split. There we go are. On, just put it in. Just marble it. Chip, just chocolate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Do you want it in a ringtone? No. 
No, I've got something okay. special for that. That's lovely. That's, right, that's going to be the best chocolate, chocolate mousse. mousse. All right, um, then. Okay, so we've got our, our Melba there. That's looking good. Okay, right, we beautiful. We do something with these other peaches. We could do one of those knickerbock flicker things. Okay, have you got a glass there? No. You haven't got a glass no. there? Well, how am I going to make a knickerbock flicker Here, thing? Do a mini one. Yeah, all right, then, a mini one. All right, right then, fantastic. you got some of that. Dice yeah. up, some of that. No problem. There. Yeah. You've still got some of that dice stuff there. Give oh, us a bit of that. I'll tell you what, you have that. I'll yeah, have right, this. Then. There you go. All right, then, a couple of minutes to go now. Yeah, no, we're fine. And if it did split, what would you suggest to do? That frame? Right away and start again. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Phil, you do. You kind of, you always say, if it splits, add a little bit of milk to it, let it relax. If your cream splits. Oh, just chuck it away. <laughs> No, no, seriously. I, actually, mm -hmm. take, wait, wait a second, mate. One second. Mm -hmm. What right you can then. do is if double cream over whips. Yeah. If you just take it out of the fridge and leave it for, leave it for a couple of minutes. Yeah. What happens is. You've got a cornell. You, yeah. You're going to use all of that. No, no. Here, guys, just do okay, that. Okay. Let me get a spoon. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, carry on. So whip, over it with double cream. Yeah. Leave it for a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. Pour some milk on it. Yeah. Gently whip it back together and it brings it back. Yeah, that's right. Okay. That's right. That's what I thought you were telling me before. Yeah. Okay. I was. I was going to say that. Yeah. Of course. Uh, yeah. Were well, you really Tony? Yeah. Ooh, okay. That, that raspberry sauce, eh? Yeah. That's oh, a bit oh, of raspberry oh, sauce. Oh, well, don't use it all. No, no. Hang on a minute. Where am I? Oh yeah. I don't know. Where I'm are you? Yeah. Steady cook. Yeah. There we are. Tony, would I get? Where did you think you were? I'm not sure. Eh? Hey? Okay. What have you done with all my raspberries, you lot? I haven't seen the raspberries. You haven't seen Did the raspberries? raspberries in the bag? Oh, here, mate. Thank you, some here. Don't worry about it. Just get rid of all of this. Let's kind of, let's keep this going. I need some of that chocolate, please, uh, Phil. Yeah. No, not... Uh, okay. Melted? Yeah. Hey, do you want to... Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Do you want to just pour some of that melted chocolate over that chocolate mousse? Yeah, of course I will, please. There we are, there we are. Chocolate just melted down there. And a little bit on here. Okay. Around the outside there, make okay, it look nice. Okay, lovely. There we are, matey. Anything else with chocolate? Bit of chocolate on here too. Yeah. There we are, and we had a little bit of a sliced peach on there. Good. And a bit of chocolate grated there. Four, three, two, one. Stop. <laughs> well done, Phil. OK, we require a name from you, Oh, chef. don't be cheesecake and it's going to taste lovely. Cheesecake and mistaken? Or... No? Don't be cheese taken. Musca muscaponi joking. <laughs> <laughs> what did there, you do? We? Yeah, I think you should. <laughs> Tell what us. What did we do? We uh, Phil very kindly melted the chocolate. I soaked um, some of the brownies yeah, on, in, Phil, in some Baileys. In fact, you can pour some of that over that mousse there. There's a yeah, bit left. Yeah, over there. Oh, the meringue. Um, oh, the meringue. Yeah, cool. Look at and that. And then we uh, sweetened the, uh, the mascarpone mm. cheese with some icing sugar and vanilla. And we folded some whipped cream, which you beautifully whipped. Mm -hmm. Took you a bit long, but you got there in the end. Yeah. Beautifully whipped it through, and that made our, our filling, our stuffing mm. for our, our cheesecake there. Mm -hmm. Some fresh rolls on top, and then a raspberry sauce around here. We used the same filling, but this time we used um, we used a, a vanilla, uh, an ice cream scoop. Mm -hmm. By the time they eat it, they think it's vanilla ice cream. It's too late, mm. so you got away with it. So it's mascarpone, <laughs> vanilla sugar, peaches, and rolls because because it should have vanilla ice cream with it. You see? Yeah, all right, sure. And uh, I don't know. I lost the plot then. I forgot <laughs> where I was. I think you did lose the plot. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, of course, you can always look at C Facts or check out our website bbc.co.uk forward slash food from Tony, this man here, and myself. See you soon. Bye bye. Take care. <laughs>